This video we're going to talk about introduction to rate of reactions. So for different chemical reactions, actually they have different rates. For examples, okay, we've got three examples here. The first one, okay, hydrogen react with oxygen, the pop sound test. You should know that the reaction for this one should be very, very fast. Okay, if you have a large quantity of hydrogen, it will be even explosive. The one in the middle, okay, we put magnesium into acid. Metal react with acid is also a fast reaction because you can see the hydrogen formation very quickly, okay, releasing from the magnesium. However, you can see that okay, the one on the right hand side, okay, we have iron react with oxygen and water. This is a rusting process. You should know that rusting process it will be very long. It will take weeks, okay, in order to, uh, for you to see the hydrated iron three hydrated iron three oxide. To form, okay. So this one, okay, is a very slow reaction. So you will see that actually chemical reactions, okay, are simply from the equation we cannot tell the rate of reaction, how fast will it be or how slow will it be. So therefore, these chapters we mainly learn about how to find out the rate of our reactions through doing experiments. Okay, so our uh, pay attention, reactions proceed with a wide range of rates. Some will be fast, some will be slow. So here we'll have two more examples. So uh, like putting a piece of calcium in water, you know that the reaction will be fast because bubbles come up uh, very quickly. But if you put zinc into water, zinc is not a very, very reactive metal. So if you put it in water, the reaction will be relatively slow. Okay, calcium is a more reactive metal, so therefore you put in water will be faster. Okay, while uh, part B, silver nitrate solutions add to sodium chloride solution. So this reaction is precipitation reaction. So therefore the reaction is rel uh, relatively fast because you can see the white precipitate formed immediately once two things mix together. But if you put copper into silver nitrate solutions, this is a displacement reaction. It is fast, but comparing to the precipitation, it will be slower. It takes time for the silver form on the surface of the copper. So therefore, there is a difference okay, in the rate of reaction. So why do we need to study rate of reactions? Okay, Because after we know all the factors affecting the rate of reactions, we know that how fast will it be, how slow will it be, we can either speed up the favorable reaction. For example, I like uh, the formations okay, of ammonia, okay, forming formation of ammonia. Okay, that one is called Haber process. If I like Haber process, okay, I want to have ammonia form faster, then I can do something to speed up the rate of reactions. But for example, I don't like the decay of my food, okay, decay of food, okay. Uh, I want to, uh, it to keep longer. I don't want to have it turn bad so fast. Then maybe we can do some things to slow down the unfavorable reactions. That's why, okay, you can see that we can have a fridge. Okay, fridge is uh, having a cold environment. We know that one of the factors is temperature. If we have high temperature, normally the reaction rate will be faster. Okay, so therefore, if we can lower the temperature, lower the temperature, then we can reduce the rate. So the food will go back uh, slower. Okay, so this is why we have to study rate of reaction. So rate of reaction is actually, uh, we have some maths for that, okay? Rate, okay, it must be related to time. So you find that we're gonna see the change in concentrations of the reactant and product uh, over time. So uh, this is the definition of rate of reactions. So uh, you can see that, okay, we can either have product or reactant. If it is a product, because it's change in rate of reaction, change means or uh, new value, new value minus old value. Okay, so um the rate of reactions. Okay, for products. Okay, we know that. Okay, the new value that means the total product formed minus old value. That means the or uh, the product at the very beginning. This will be a positive values. Okay, so the new value minus old values over time. That will be the rate of reaction. But for rate of reactions, okay, if we respect to reactant, you will see that as time goes by, okay, for the product it have to be increased. But as time goes by for the reactant, it should be decreased. So therefore, for rate of reactions, okay, or uh, if I use a new value minus old value. These sections, okay, it will be negative. 
Okay, so therefore, normally rate of reactions, okay, we have a negative signs, okay, to indicate that that is talking about the reactant. As time goes by, the reactant should go in less and less. So therefore, a negative sign used to represent this one. Okay, rate of reaction, reactant negative. Rate of reaction of product that will be positives. Okay, so this one bear in mind. So uh, this are uh, definitions. Okay, we'll talk about change in concentrations of reagent product. But actually, rate of reaction can be considered as uh, not only concentration, but other than like maybe the mass, maybe the volume, maybe many other things. Okay, we can use it as long as we can measure it. Okay, to quantify it, the reagent product, we can use it as part of the unit. Okay, so for solid, okay, sometimes we may talk about gram. Okay, so G will be one of the unit. Aqueous solutions most of the time will be mole per dm cube. Okay, so that will be the unit for the or, or the concentrations. Okay, or molarity of the aqueous solutions. For gases, okay, normally we'll talk about the volumes. Okay, so the volume will be in dm cube most of the time. Okay, so these are the unit that we commonly use to uh, represent the change in the substance. And for time, okay, uh, normally we'll use for time, namely we'll use second, or we can use minutes, okay, both of them would be all right, okay. So uh, for unit, okay, so our combinations of these things with this one, okay, we will see that, okay, can't change in concentration against time, so time have to be negative one, okay, so divided by second divided by minute, so we have all this. So pay attention, okay, you have like volume against minute, okay, volume per minute, gram per minute, okay, that means how, uh, one minute, how many gram you have changed, mole per dm cube, that with a change in concentration per second, m per second, wait for a while, this one is incorrect. Okay, I just want you to emphasize. I just want to emphasize that this one is incorrect. Okay, if you want to talk about the concentration, you say, "Oh, concentration. I can use one m, which is equals to one mole per dm cube." Remember, this one is a specific unit talking about concentration of, um, solutions only. It is have to be a concentration unit. You can't integrate into this one. You cannot. Okay, so therefore we don't accept, uh capital letter m per second okay we only accept mole per dm cubed per second okay so this one have to bear in mind okay when you write about the rate of reaction the unit okay no capital letter m per second so uh this slide okay we're going to talk about the relationship between rate ratios and also mole ratios okay so if we have a reactions or uh, 3a plus 2b becomes c plus 2d Okay, so uh, right here, okay, the ratio 3 to 2, okay, 3 to 1, 3 to 2, okay. So if I know that the rate of consumption of A, that means A as time goes by, it will reduce. The rate is X mole per dm cube per second. This is the one that I know. I can use rate of uh, consumption of A to calculate rate of consumption of B. Just think about like this, okay. The rate when we have used up 3 mole, okay. Uh, for three uh, per, uh, period of time, three mole of A have been used up. Actually, at the same time, I have to use up two mole of B. Is that right? Because the mole ratio is three to two. And at the same time, I'm going to produce one mole of C and also produce two mole of D. This ratio have to be kept okay, as far as the reaction keep on going. Okay. And for the time, okay, all these A, B, C, D, they will expand experience the same time frame because they are the same reaction so or uh, when we have three mode disappeared okay one mode form in the process a and c will experience the similar not the similar the same time span okay or uh, say for example this one experience our uh, three minutes to decrease by three mode this one have to be three minutes to produce one mode so you will find that okay the number of mode over time mole over time okay that will be the or uh, that will be the that will be the rate of reaction or number of mole over volume over time okay that will be the uh, rate of the reactions so you'll find that actually rate of reactions is more or less the same ratio as mole ratio because all these things they are the same 
Okay, this one is the same. The volume is the same. Okay, because it's the same system. So number of mode changes. Okay, we related to the rates ratio as well. So basically, okay, uh, if I want, if I know that this one is x, okay, we can simply say that oh, the mode ratio of a to b, a to b is three to two. So therefore, the rate of consumption of b will be x divided by itself times others okay 隨自己成人地, so the rate of reaction will then be 2x over 3 mole per dm cube per second okay so same thing happened okay to a to c if it is a to c this is 3 this is 1 okay so basically you divide it by 3 times 1 so you have x over 3 mole per dm cube per second and then this one is the same okay x divided by 3 times 2 okay that will be 2x per 3 mole per dm cube so you can see that actually this one d the rate of formation and also rate of consumption b are the same simply because they have the same mole ratio okay got it because i have used consumption the word consumption and formation on the process so you see that i didn't have any charges in front of it i didn't have positive negative things like that so if you say consumption we know that that will be related to the reactants. If I say that formation, that I know that that will be related to the product. This one have to be related to the product, while this one have to be related to the reactant. Okay. When should we use positive or negative? If I'm not saying rate of consumption or formation, I'm just rate of reaction. Then if I say rate of reaction, then at that time you may need to have to show positive to negative to tell the others whether this one is, if it's negative, that will be talking about reactant. If it's positive, that should be talking about product. But if you write formation and consumption, actually you don't need to write uh, positive and negative in this way. So I'll uh, just have an example so you know better what is that. So this is a reaction, uh, hydrogen peroxide react with the iodine. So we say that the iodine, that means this one, okay, change from 0 to uh, 4 times 10 to negative 4 in 8 seconds. So you can see there is a change there. So for part A, formation of iodine, because it's giving you formation, so you don't need to write positive or negative. So the process is pretty simple. You just have final value minus initial value over time that would be all right so this one basically you have five times ten to negative five the unit will be mole per dm cube and then per second okay so uh you can see the answers here okay so part b when we talk about consumption of hydrogen peroxide consumption of hydrogen peroxide because it's state consumption already so we don't need to write the charge for it okay we don't need to say positive or negative but you see that the ratio is one to one so we can expect it okay part b answer have to be the same okay so it will be five times ten to negative five mole per dm cube per second okay let's have a look so you can see that okay uh the answer is the same okay mole uh, five times ten to negative five mole per dm cube but uh, actually they have done a long ways okay to do the math okay i prefer you use this one you simply say that mole ratio of h2o2 to i2 is one to one so therefore rate of consumption of h2o2 equals to rate of formation of i2 so basically you just write down okay oh therefore the rate will equals to five times ten ten to negative five mole per dm cube like that would be good enough already okay so uh use uh try to use more ratios okay to speed up your reactions at uh, the calculations so uh one thing I want to draw your attention okay we will can be using this method to calculate i2 h plus i minus and h2o2 okay simply the same uh, method to do that okay but for this one okay we sell them to find out the f uh, change i mean the rate of formation of h2o2 simply because h2o2 is a solvent that means it is in a large quantity with a large number of large number of uh water in the whole solutions so the change in it actually is insignificant okay so mm, we seldom ask about this one okay so next okay we're going to talk about consumption of iodine iodine is here so if this one is five so if you go this one divided five by one times two 
don't forget 10 to negative 5 so uh, if you do that way okay you should have something like 1 times 10 to negative 4 okay mole per dm cube per second okay so have a look of the answer see whether it's correct so this one it is the same okay so uh, you can use this one okay they find out they, they use mole to find out of oh, this one uh, we have one mole and then this one will be two mole okay and then they do the conversions okay blah 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 things like that okay but I prefer you simply say that oh mole ratio of uh, H2O2 to uh, I minus equals to 1 to 2 so therefore uh, rate of for consumption of I2 equals to rate of consumption of H2O2 divided by 1 times 2 then you write down the answer that would be good enough already okay so I prefer you use this method so of just give you one more example okay so nitrogen reacts with oxygen in a sealed discharge so right here nitrogen dioxide is one okay from 0 to 0 0.48 okay in two seconds so 0 0.48 minus 0 over 2 so this one will be 0 0.24 mole per dm cube per second here okay per second here okay so this one is 0 0.24 so um basically this one okay and then rate of consumption of nitrogen if you talk about nitrogen you should divide it by two times one so rate of consumption okay of nitrogen will equals to rate of formation of NO2 divided by two times one just because of the ratios okay remember you have to mention okay mole ratio of N2 to NO2 equals to 1 to 2. You have to mention this one first, okay? Then you can just calculate the calculations, uh, the, the steps of reactions, okay? So uh, lastly, okay, consumption of oxygen. So uh, this one, the answer should be 0 0.12 mole per dm cube, okay? For the oxygen, you find the oxygen, they should be 2 to 2, okay? So again, it should be 0 0.24. Answer, you can check it right here, okay? No, not that difficult. So to summarize the whole video, okay, so you have to know that reactions, they will have a wide range of rates, different reactions have different rates. So if we study the rate of reaction, we can alter the rate of reactions, favorable, the good one, okay, we can speed up, okay, the bad one, okay, we can slow down, okay. So example would be like decaying of food, okay, formation of uh, industrial products, okay. So pay attention to the unit, okay, uh, remember M per second is not acceptable capital letter M only for the concept molarity of a solution so remember mole ratio and rate ratio they are friends okay make use of mole ratios then we can find the rate ratio faster so today we have learned three terms rate of consumption rate of formation for this one no need positive or negative sign in front of the data but if you talk about rate of reaction then you may need to say positive or negative for that okay if it is a product then the rate will be positive say for example positive 5 mole per dm cube per second okay if it is a reactant then you have to say negative 5 mole per dm cube per second okay so basically it would be like that that's all for this video bye bye